everyone! If you watch my videos, you will know that I have tried to use the silicone putty before to make a miniature photo frame or a mould of one, and it went completely wrong. So I ordered some more, and this is attempt number two, where I'm going to try and make a mould of this miniature frame that I bought at a doll's house fair, so that I have a mould where I can put some plaster of Paris in and try and make my own frame. So I started by putting the frame into this little pot because I thought maybe the silicone putty needed to sit in a container so that it didn't spill out too far, but that pot was too big. So I then tried this pot and it was too small. It's a little bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, isn't it? So in the end I just decided to do it on a plate. So if you haven't watched my previous video, please feel free to go back and watch it. But basically, I'd ordered this silicone putty where you mix the white together with the blue and once those two components are fully mixed, it starts to react and harden. But what went wrong was, I don't know if you can see on the instructions here, but it says pot life 3 to 15 minutes. There's a big difference between 3 and 15 minutes and I don't know if pot life means how long it lasts when the two components are mixed together before it hardens or if it just means how long each component separately lasts when it's outside the bag. But I was mixing the two components together and then it just suddenly hardened. So this time I knew I had to be really really fast for it to work. So in this footage I've left it in real time so that's the speed that I was working it together and I haven't cut any of this footage out so that you could see how long I spent mixing the two components together. But I have to be honest, I panicked. I didn't want it to set like it did before, before I had chance to push the frame in. So actually, I think I overcompensated. <laughs> oh no, this looks such a mess watching the video back. So when I move my hands away, you can see there's loads of white still left, so the white and the blue should be mixed together so that they just make one consistent colour. But I really didn't want to do what I did before, but basically I've gone the opposite way. And these two components were not mixed together enough for it to set. And I knew straight away what I'd done, but I couldn't take the frame back out to carry on kneading it together because the bits that I had already mixed together were starting to set. I could feel it under my fingers, so some bits were really soft and some bits were already hardening. And oh, at this point I was just thinking, no! In the footage here, I'm actually trying to mix together the white bits with the soft blue bits still and then try and work it around the frame um, just to try and save it because actually this putty had cost quite a bit of money and I'm well aware that I could just buy a really cheap miniature frame on the internet but my joy is in making these things myself so I wanted to stick at it and I persevered and keep watching the video to see how this turned out. I've got to admit that I felt a little bit exasperated when I was doing this because I couldn't I couldn't believe what I'd done and the fact that I'd just gone in completely the opposite direction to my first attempt. But actually watching it back, I think it's quite funny. Oh look at that, look at all the white that's not mixed in. I decided to leave it to see how it turned out but actually as I looked at it I thought it was so easy to push the frame in that actually, did I push it all the way through the silicon and is the frame actually resting against the plate instead of a nice layer of silicon underneath it? Um, so I kind of squidged it down a bit here just to try and fill the little indentations in the frame and then I decided to flip it over but it started to harden, look I was able to pop the scissors inside without causing a hole but when I flipped it over, I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of a rectangular gap all the way around where the part of the frame that sticked out the most had gone all the way through the silicon. So I found some nice soft bits, kneaded them together, and then tried to patch it together so that there were no gaps. Because I thought if I am going to save this mould, the last thing I want is gaps where the plaster of Paris is just going to run straight out the other side. Oh dearie me. By the way, thank you so much for all your words of encouragement in the comments on my first attempt on the last video. Um, you really <laughs> cheered me up after my first failed attempt. Um, I might need some more words of encouragement here, that would be very helpful. So <laughs> if you want to leave any comments with any suggestions or kind words, then I would really appreciate it. Although, as I said, keep watching to the end of the video, because it's not all a disaster. 
Um, after I'd let it set, I decided to try and take some of the white out because that bit hadn't set and there were some soft bits of blue. So I'd left it for a few hours and I could then feel which bits had hardened and which hadn't and I found this cavity in the middle where there was a lot of white that hadn't been mixed in at all and therefore hadn't set. And this middle section here I didn't actually need in the mould because that's the centre of the frame. So I scooped this bit out and then around the corner of the mould there was a lot of blue that hadn't set because it just hadn't been mixed at all with white so on this corner here it was really soft, it hadn't set at all. So I merged this with the white and then I pushed it back around the frame. At this point I did think to myself, even if this all sets, I've probably actually messed around with this mould so much that all the intricacies of the frame, the mould probably hasn't actually set around because I kind of pulled it away and pushed it back and pulled it away again and pushed it back. Um, but as I say, I wanted to stick with it and see if I could salvage anything. Apologies if the sound's a little bit funny by the way, I've noticed my microphone keeps cutting out a little bit and also my cat's arrived and she's pairing right down the microphone. She sat herself in between me and the microphone so she's closer to the, mi to the microphone than I am. Anyway, um, so here everything had set pretty much. There were some, some areas that were still a little bit soft but I thought this is set enough to see how it's gone. Some of the edges here had just stuck together at the points where I needed to get the frame out so I just gently cut away at them. That was fine, that wasn't a problem because this bit of the mould wasn't needed. At this point I had no idea if the silicone mould was going to work. Um, I prized the frame out carefully but I didn't know if any of the silicone was still soft inside and actually it was, it hadn't mixed together with the white putty so I peeled it off my frame uh, but I thought actually let's have a go anyway, let's put the plaster of Paris into the mould and see what happens. So if you've watched my previous videos you will know that I found this plaster of Paris in the charity shop. It has the words of caution on it and if you're using Plaster of Paris yourself please do follow the instructions. There are um, risks to using Plaster of Paris so always read the cautions carefully and make sure you follow exactly as the guidance says. Um, unfortunately I didn't have the instructions. I think it's because the Plaster of Paris was in the charity shop so I think it was separated from its original set which will have come with the instructions. So what I did was I just mixed a little bit of water at a time in with the plaster of Paris and I made sure that I didn't have any contact with my skin um, and I mixed it in a pot which could go in the bin afterwards. So I'm actually just using a kebab skewer here to stir it. I have a box of these large kebab skewers. They've come in handy for so many crafty things and you get loads in the box like a hundred or something for really cheap. Um, so yeah, I used one of those to mix it. By the way, always make sure that children are supervised whilst using the Plaster of Paris to make sure that the cautions and the guidelines are being followed and the instructions. So I gently poured this into my little silicone mould. I was holding it over a tub just in case there were any holes and leaks, but actually there were no leaks. The Plaster of Paris ran around the mould nicely and didn't seep through. Some of the plaster of Paris had seeped over the edge and I'm watching this video back now and I hadn't realised that I had actually tried to brush it away with my finger. Obviously that goes against what I've just said because you shouldn't touch plaster of Paris and then I did it again here to test whether it had set and actually it was now dry and had set so I think it was safer to touch but yeah don't copy what I was doing there and touching the plaster of Paris because as I say the, there are quite a lot of cautions on the sides of the instructions of plaster of Paris. So when it was set, and this was after about a few hours, um, I gently prized the plaster of Paris frame out of its silicone mould. Obviously still I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. It was quite exciting actually to see how it was going to turn out. It was hard to get out of the mould because there were some indentations where bits overlap and that's how it was meant to be but I just had to be really gentle as I took it out. And actually, considering the start I had to this project, I thought that was pretty good. 
There were still some bits of blue putty that hadn't set, so I needed to rub them off. And actually, you'll see in a few seconds that I used a paintbrush just to brush them off gently. There were also some edges which looked a little bit rough, so I used a nail file just to sand those down a bit. And then you'll see in a moment that I do get my craft knife out and just gently scrape away some of the excess plaster of Paris just to make the shape a little bit more smooth. So this is resting on my cutting mat and as you can see I'm just brushing the craft knife away from me just to try and be safe. Again if you're working with children if you're trying to replicate this please please make sure that they are always supported and don't copy anything that I do because I don't know that I'm always doing things in the safest way so this isn't really a tutorial to show you how to do it it's just me showing you how I did do it so I then had a little look at my frame the pattern and the design on the front of the frame isn't as defined as the original as you can see but actually I quite like it I like the fact that it's slightly different from the original so I'd bought some metallic paint, but as you can see, it was a little bit too red in colour to match the frame exactly. So I first started by adding a bit of white acrylic, but as you can see here, it just made the colour kind of go pinky, pinky brown. So that still wasn't quite right. I tried adding some yellow ochre, which was much better. It made the shade much closer to the original frame. So I painted this on. By mixing the yellow ochre acrylic with the metallic paint, it meant that it lost its metallic effect slightly, and the colour wasn't quite the same as the original frame. But I thought I'd paint it anyway, and leave it to dry to see how it turned out. Whilst it was drying, I painted the portraits that were going to go into the two frames. So if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I have the two characters, Ratty and Mole from Wind in the Willows, that my mum made me as a Christmas present and they live in my Tudor doll's house in their own little Tudor outfits. So I'd already painted a portrait of Ratty, which is already in its frame and ready to hang on the gallery wall of my doll's house. But I had space for two more portraits and I knew one was going to be Mole. And I asked in the comments section for ideas of what to paint in my second uh, picture that was going to go into the frame that I've made in today's video and I had some wonderful suggestions so thank you so much I had people who suggested that I could do a landscape to go with my portrait of Ratty and Mull. someone suggested painting the doll's house but putting it into a setting which I thought was a really lovely idea and I also had quite a few suggestions saying that I could paint the ancestors of Ratty and Mull. And the idea that I decided to settle on was to actually paint a female character. I haven't quite decided what relation she is to Ratty and Mole yet, but actually I thought it'd be really nice to do a female character so that I could study the Tudor clothes that a female would have worn. Um, and I've decided to put my female character's portrait into my new frame. So. Because this frame had lost its metallic effect, I decided to get some old eyeshadow, which is just from the pound shop, really cheap, and I don't use it, um, and I never will use it, because I just use it for crafts. Um, and I brushed this over the frame, and it made all the difference. It made it a really nice metallic-y colour. So I started to draw my portrait to go into this frame, and this is how it started, but then I actually rubbed it out because I decided to do it so that it was in the centre, looking forwards, so that the composition was different from the painting of Ratty and the painting of Mole. So Mole is positioned so that he's looking to the left, and Ratty is positioned so he's looking to the right. So I thought actually this portrait can go in the centre between those two paintings. It's always quite daunting to add the eyes to a painting because I always feel like it's the eyes that bring the painting to life and if they're wrong then it can affect the entire painting but actually I was really happy with these eyes and the little nose 
and I thought they did bring the painting to life in a really nice way. So when it was dry, it was time just to draw around the frame again, just to check the position of the painting and make sure that I was cutting it out correctly. I'd painted an acrylic and I really like oil paints but obviously it takes so long to dry um, and I did consider putting sort of a layer of varnish over the top of this painting to make it look more like oil paint but then I decided not to risk it because I didn't want to ruin my painting. I did decide to just write on the back who'd painted it and when because you never know where this doll's house is going to turn up one day. Obviously I'm going to keep it because it means a lot to me but in a century's time, who knows who will have it? And I like the thought that somebody might just read that message on the back and learn a bit of the history of it. Or they might be watching this video, so hello. I hope you like my doll's house and thank you for looking after it. For the two paintings that went into the original frames, I was able to just stick the back on using masking tape, but for this one made out of plaster of Paris, the masking tape wouldn't stick, so I did add just a little bit of glue to help it. I then went through the same process for my portrait of Mole, carefully cutting him out and then pop him, pop, blah, 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 popping him into the frame um, and writing a little message on the back. For the back of the painting, to keep it in the frame, all I'm using here is a nice piece of red card that was actually from my bag of recycling. So I think it was a piece of packaging that had a Christmas present in it. But I've used the same piece on the back of each of the paintings, I thought it was nice and neat. So this is what my three portraits look like, ta-da! What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. I'd made quite a mess. Whilst doing my painting, I still had my materials out from making my silicone mould, um, I had some crafting bits from some other miniatures that I'd been making on the same day, so I'd had a very busy productive weekend, and I do have two more videos that are ready to upload over the next couple of weeks, and I'm excited to show you what I've been making. So do remember to hit subscribe if you're interested, because I try and post a video every week. And then it was time to put these paintings into the doll's house. Please do let me know what you think of the frame. I like the fact that it looks different from the other two. I think it looks old and in keeping with the era of the doll's house. So it's going to go on this gallery wall at the back. If you've not watched any of the other videos in my playlist, basically I bought this doll's house for £15 from a recycling centre and it came with bits in it, including the glue dots that I'm using to stick these up with. Um, and I've completely made over the doll's house, so I've taken it back to the Tudor era. The videos are all in a playlist if you'd like to watch. And I had asked for advice on where I should put my portraits and a lot of people had said pop them on the gallery wall at the back, so that's what I'm doing. And I think that looks really good, so thank you for your advice. Thank you so much to everybody that's watched the video and everybody's welcome in my little community, so please do hit subscribe and leave a comment to let me know that you've been watching. Um, let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see and hopefully I'll see you soon. So thank you for watching, do tune in next Wednesday and have a lovely day or evening.